Both should strip and dance naked? That is absolutely bizarre. This is Romy here and welcome to a visual novel demo game called Degraman. I don't know how to pronounce it. I even tried to look it up if, like uh, uh, how to pronounce it, but it kept telling me how to pronounce another word, which I think is wrong. But I have reached out by the team to play this demo. Um, I've seen pictures of this game, but I never got around to it to actually look into it. But um, now I can actually fully dive in and look into this game because the developers reached me out and I wanted to spotlight this game quickly because it is during demo version I don't know if they have a Kickstarter they didn't link me to one or anything I don't know if they are planning to have a Kickstarter or not or maybe they already did and um, this is a second part of a demo I'm not too sure they reached me out I said I would do it um, <laughs> So let's actually get into it and read a little bit about this game. So you live a normal life. You listen to your mother like a good daughter. You go to college like a good student. You take care of stray cats like a good Samaritan. Life is measured, dull, and monotonous. Monotonous? But calm and predictable. You always know that tomorrow will be the same as it is today. The same as it was yesterday. But all that is gone in a moment. Washed away in a stream of crystal clear water. Your girl does like water, so this is already scaring me. <laughs> the beginning of your new life is marked by the appearance of mysterious kidnappers. They don't ask for your permission, or nor do they care if you're prepared. Not before dragging you into an unknown world full of strange, incomprehensible, mystical, and sometimes terrible things. But you're not afraid for these same very people are ready to protect you with their lives. Extremely attractive, they give you all of their <laughs> they give all of their attention to you. You're important to them. You're special. What's more, you are one of them superhumans waging in waging an invincible or sorry invisible war for the salvation of all mankind life is awash with color now that you're no longer an ordinary person who is invisible to the eye of the world now that you're his his savior savior but what if none of that were true? What if you were still the same gray figure the entire world saw you as? What if you were just a bargaining chip and a game for depraved superhumans? A game with no rules, a game in which every mistake leads to an inevitable and cruel death. A game in which the correct path is not always obvious. Only by straddling the line between evil and greater evil are you able to snatch your chance at survival. But is it worth it? And I believe, I don't know if, if all of these characters that they're showing me on this page are candidates, but let me count real quick. I'm not going to say their names because I kind of want us to like to visit them. Um, obviously, you're going to see them if you download the demo. I'm going to leave it a link in the description box. They have it in Ichio form and in Steam form. I'm going to list the Ichio one, but you can definitely go to Steam and download it yourself. What the fuck? <laughs> Eight people but there's gonna um there's only two ran romanceable love interests and six side characters who you can flirt and perhaps even have an affair yo yo <laughs> i am not ready for that what so there's only two main candidates but you there there's six side characters that can ruin that what the fuck it, the full game is going to feature 21 chapters, 15 plus endings, 80 plus CG art, and 30 plus background. There's going to be a, roughly 10 plus hours of gameplay. There is going to be adult sexual content in the full game. It's not in the demo version. Again, I'm trying to see when they're going to drop the full version. I guess they didn't decide to do Kickstarter, I'm assuming. Because um, the demo was uploaded last year in November. If I'm reading this right, 11, 10, 2019, in November 10th, 2019, the full demo came. Yeah, I'm very late to the game. <laughs> I always use Michiko as my name. I know some of you may find it weird that I'm not using a Romy, but I always use Michiko because I don't want to use my YouTube name. Chapter 1. I don't know how long the demo is, so we're just gonna play until we obviously hit the end. What the fuck is that? Is that a weird cat or is that a tree ranch? <laughs> 
Well, I wake up mildly disoriented, coming to my senses, I realize that I'm lying on a bench in a park. The, un the pleasant, sorry, the pleasant, not unpleasant, the pleasant murmuring of leaves, a fresh cool breeze, the warmth of the rustling fabric beneath my cheek. Taking in a breath of fresh air, I catch a scent, a very pleasant, vaguely familiar, yet incredibly alluring scent. The overwhelmingly pleasant feeling that comes over me draws me draws my strength away, and I close my eyes once more, burying my face deeper into the fabric on which I lay. Wait, hold on a minute. I'm on a bench, in the park. Abruptly, I jumped to my feet, but feeling dizzy, slumped back down again with a painful groan and clutched my forehead. Want a drink? A man's voice, it's calm and pleasant. Suddenly, a bottle is underneath my nose. Does it smell like water? <laughs> <coughs> The moment I see the water, barely forgetting, for, barely forgotten knowledge begins to flood back into my mind, and I freeze. Specks of light dance in my eyes as I sit here nauseated. I hate water. Oh my god! A main character that also doesn't like water as much as I don't like water. It's just not, not just like drinking water, guys. I, I mean like the ocean, the beach. I can't swim. It's my biggest fear. Without thinking, I shove the bottle away and scrunch my eyes. There's no need to get hysterical. Another voice, but it's quite different from the first. It's rough and more emotional. Oh, are you guys the two potential like only candidates? Or are you guys the side pieces? <laughs> By gathering all of my strength, I force myself, I force my painfully shut eyes open. Apologize, clumsily, remain awkward, awkwardly quiet, reply caustically. Um, I would probably apologize for being so, uh, a bratty when I wake up, I guess. And stare straight into the bright eyes of the man sitting next to me. Judging by his outstretched arm, I must have accidentally hit him when I pushed away the bottle he had offered me. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Almost homeless, but happy. Nice shirt. Sorry for being rude. I'm a little confused here. Having plucked up my courage, I turn towards a taller, friendlier looking man. Perhaps you can tell me what I'm doing here. Yes. Your name is Beefcake? Or is, my, is that my nickname for him? So these strange men know something. They're not just standing here for no reason at all, are they? But who are they? And what do they want from me? Maybe I should be a little more assertive with my questions. What am I doing here? Despite my clever tactics, that sounded pretty ridiculous. Huh, you're sitting on a bench. Well, nice. Okay, purple eyed. <laughs> I sigh heavily. Okay, what is that? That's not a mere cat, it's an animal. <laughs> Who the fuck is that? Who the fuck? I have like trauma from uh, Seven Scarlet of just strange figures in the background. If you guys have not watched that series, you sometimes get strange figures in the background that freak you the fuck out. <laughs> I sigh heavily. I can already tell that the purple eyed man is a nasty character. He's quite handsome though. I was it too. Okay, I guess. <laughs> I didn't say you can, but okay. <laughs> this guy sits down next to me and leans back against the bench. He's quite handsome though. It really happened. What are you talking about? T the time stop. The whatever. Or the whatever. The water, sorry. The masked man. The man in the background? <laughs> My brain spins as I try to process the words in the situation I'm in. This game just threw me in and I am confused. But it's interesting. So I'm being entertained still. You're going to have to believe us. Sinking to but a whisper and with words tinged by acid, it says, Or you'll die. Okay, bitch. Sure. Or you'll die, bitch. I probably jump up from the bench and make to run. Okay. <laughs> I guess that's natural instinct to run if someone says, or you'll die. But wouldn't running away also make you die quicker? But my path is blocked by the taller man. Hold on. Stop, you fool. I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm trying to help you. Confused, I stop in my tracks. My brain is racing. On the other hand, I don't normally talk to strange men. Especially ones who are assholes. But nothing about the situation is normal. At all. Images continue to form in my mind, time stopping, the appearance of water and light, waking up in the park, the strange men next to me who look and act even curiouser and curiouser. I didn't even know those, that was a word. And apparently they know what's going on here. Maybe this really is just a dream. If that's the case, I might as well follow the script. <laughs> Fine, but I want an explanation. He's quite handsome. I really love his eyes. Dusting himself off, the shorter man stands up from the bench. He's shorter? I guess he is, in a way. <laughs> Stands up from the bench, his voice quite enthusiastic. Let's go then. Vincent, his name is Vincent? Hmm, I was, in, I was intent on playing along, but it seems the playwright has drunkenly changed the genre. That, ooh, you put a jacket on. Quite handsome. The so man walks around me and grabs something on the ground near the bench. Was that his jacket? Oh, damn. I then realized that I must have been what I'd been laying on when I woke up. Oh, damn. 
Should I dust it off for you? <laughs> and that I knocked it down when I jumped to my feet after being startled by Purple Eye's words. Even if all of this really is just a dream, I feel bad. This stranger took care of me, and I responded rather harshly. He spared me his jacket and is probably freezing now. And yet, I thought he was trying to show off his killer arts. <laughs> Then another realization hits me, and I flush red. The scent that I delighted in was laying down on his jacket, and it, it was the smell of his body. Is this all really just a dream? Are these two my subconscious desires for a man's attention? <laughs> it certainly makes, it makes sense considering how attractive they are. If that's the case, perhaps the dream could be a little more lucid. I had stumbled upon a book about lucid dreaming some time ago. Apparently, you can control these types of dreams simply by using your imagination. I don't think we're in a dream though, girl, but I'm gonna let her- I- I guess I'll- I'll- Bullshit shrimp and dance naked? That is absolutely bizarre. A tall one should remove his shirt along with his jacket. Purple eyes should smell seductively and his hair should be up in a ponies- Ooh! I allow myself to be inspired- No, purple eyes should smell seductively and his hair should be up in a ponytail. Please. Although purple eyes had bad, an bad manners, he is rather handsome. And if he were to do something seductive, it would only add to the spiciness of the situation and his character. <laughs> For a moment, I imagine purple eyes alluring smile and naked neck. Your purse. The tall man's <laughs> Imagine if, like, he, like, strangely, his hands start moving and putting it up in a ponytail. He's like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> the tall man's voice pulls me out of my thoughts as he hands me my purse. Okay, so either this is a dream or lucid dreams don't work the way I thought they do. What a bummer. Maybe I should try figuring out what's going on here. Deep in thought, I begin rummaging through my purse. Ha! <laughs> Figures. One moment you're saving her and the very next she's checking her purse. Why don't you check your virginity? <laughs> you bitch! You bitch! That's actually not a bad idea, although a much better one would be to strangle the sharp-tongued jerk. After having sufficiently examined the contents of my content contents of my purse to ensure that it is indeed mine and that nothing has been touched, I fish up my phone and glance at the time. It's already seven o'clock. Oh, look at the cute little grumpy cat or a dog. It could be a cat dog. <laughs> I'm assuming it's cat though, because the the paws are like that. What is the cat doing by the water? I have 67 messages and 24 missed calls. Oh, look at my nails. There's so much to look at. Well, at least our phone battery is like decently charged. Well, this is real. If this really is a, is just a dream, then it's pretty. It's a pretty realistic one. What are you doing, chickadee? What? <laughs> Where are you, my chickadee? Answer me. Don't make me wait. I'm starting to imagine things. I'm worried. I can't believe it. You're ignoring me. You exchanged me for some strange man. Well, why don't you live with him now? Let him feed you, dress you, and kiss you on the forehead be be before bed. Who the fuck is this needy person? It took 1% off a battery to read this stupid garbage text. <laughs> Let's see. The last message is from my mom. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> and it's an odd one. With my mother's voice, my subconscious began to sp began speaking to me. It's saying something about me needing to live with a man now and hinting at a dream. Really? Why is my mom, like, texting like this, though? And yet, I still don't understand the rules of what's happening to me here. Mom, he has a Maserati. What? But no matter what's going on, reality or not, I can't ignore him. Mom, so I send her a message. I won't wait up for you tonight. Oh. <laughs> These emojis. And I really receive one back. Unfortunately, the response feels to bring me any close to the answers I'm looking for, but it's given me an opportunity. While I'm already uh, while I'm already looking at my phone, I decided to check its GPS. To my surprise, I'm only seven miles away from the university. Can you please can you stop staring at that thing? I'm waiting, you know. And I'm waiting for answers. If all of this is indeed real, I'm in quite the unpleasant predicament. I'm in a deserted park with two strange men, and who knows what they've done to me. Although, maybe all they did was stare the entire time. <laughs> that isn't my problem. I need to get you to a safe place. What would be a problem for me is if you kept acting stupid, and I need to knock you out to carry you there. How are you going to tell me I'm acting stupid? I'm just acting like confused. Like, put yourself in my situation. I woke up, and then there's two strange, hot, handsomely hot men in front of me. Like, what? Of course, threats of violence. Why am I not surprised? I'm assuming I fainted somehow, and perhaps I started to hallucinate while I was out. Then someone, possibly these two, brought me here, and they've been standing around watching me ever since. But what if my fainting wasn't accidental? Although it would be pretty unlikely that they'd wait for me to wake up if they didn't expect me to go with them of my own accord. 
Honestly, this the rude man wanted me to, wanted to drag me to a Turkish brothel. He could have done so while I was unconscious. And it's strange that they gave me my purse back. I have my phone now and I can text for help, not just message my mom. Clearly, I'm lacking the information I need to solve this conundrum. But I do know one thing for sure. Something bad is going to happen to me and I have no idea what that is. And if these guys have anything to do with it, it's all over. Even if I try to run, the big one would easily catch me. Screaming is useless too. They just knock me out and drag me deeper into the woods. And even if someone did hear my screams, it'd be too late to do anything at that point. Maybe I should try playing along, make them believe I trust them. First things first, we need to get you out of the park and to the subway. Our destination is just a few stops away. You guys aren't really telling me what you're doing with me. <laughs> They're taking me to a crowded station where I'll be safe. Now I'm even more puzzled. These two are strange kidnappers indeed, but this might be a good opportunity for me. Taking public transportation isn't a crime and shouldn't even look like one. But if you even think about trying anything while we're there, we're going to have a problem. Am I that easy to read? That's not good. Do they really have to give me a false sense of freedom? That's this is brutal. Why couldn't they just drag me to wherever they were going? Why make me suffer through this charade? As long as I'm around, they won't attack you again. You remember that white thing, I hope. Yeah, I really have no idea what's going on here. Even if that vision was all a drug-induced hallucination, there's no way anyone else could have seen it. I'm sure things are a lot more complex than they seem, and I really should be more careful until I learn more. For now, I just have to continue playing along. As for their passport, why would you casually carry that around? I know some people would if like they were in another country, maybe? Uh, ask their names. I feel like the more important thing is ask for their names. I don't even know your names. It's extremely uncomfortable going somewhere with people you don't know. I couldn't care less whether you're comfortable or not. You're coming with me. Hopefully, I won't have to see you ever again afterwards. Well, fucking rude. <laughs> well, that settles it. Purple Eyes definitely hates me. A couple minutes of oppressive silence later, the guys begin to walk on ahead. Going through between my GPS and the two of them, I quickly follow behind. We're definitely leaving the park, it seems. And actually heading towards the subway. Oh, look at this cute couple over here. They weren't lying to me about that. This is all starting to feel more real now. I decided to continue following them. I mean, what could be safer than a train ride? This woman's tall as shit. Sorry, <laughs> I was busy looking at all their expressions. Well, this is a fresh hour train ride, that is. Against our will, we end up dragged along by a stream of people in the subway, which puts me in a very awkward position. I find my nose pressed up against someone's chiseled chest. Anxiously, I try to pull away, but it's too crowded. That's when I notice a very familiar and pleasant scent. And look up. <laughs> it gives me Edward Cullen vibes. I've never even watched or read any Twilight stuff. But I've seen posters, and this is what it reminds me of. My gaze meets with bright sea-colored eyes. They're so beautiful and calm. Really? You think that's beautiful and calm? I mean, it's like, it scares me a little. So, I, I, the beautiful and calm, I don't see it right now. I'm really trying to move away. I then realize that his strong arms are holding me up, protecting me from the surrounding passengers. Why am I screaming? <laughs> danger, danger! This is too much bodily interaction. I mean, it's better than like a stranger rubbing up against me. I mean, he's still technically a stranger, but at least he's protecting us somehow. The situation is getting extremely precarious. What if they pull out a syringe and drug me with something even more powerful this time? And then I end up seeing those white things again. I don't think he would do it right here. Besides, I shouldn't be calling up to one of my kidnappers. Very true. Damn, it's just like... It's bad and bad situation whatsoever. Like, either way. Maybe if I jerk myself around and get him to let go of me. Granted, it won't be enough to save my life, but at least I won't be forced to examine his t-shirt so closely. But in attempting to improve my situation, I only end up making things worse. When I fling myself around, I nearly bump my forehead into a familiar sharp chin. <laughs> he looks super scary. Those violet eyes and thick eyebrows. But oddly enough, I find him, like, like more handsome than um, beef head or beef cake prior in this angle but he looks real pissed off figures i'm sandwiched between my kidnappers no shit they would not let me go although it's possible their intentions are noble i'm currently protected on both sides and have yet to be shoveled around i don't smell the typical sweet sweat booze cigarettes of other passengers nor have i been whacked by any passing backpacks and yet i couldn't help but think that they're doing this to prevent me from escaping but wouldn't that be difficult to do in a crowd like this whatever the case then this entire situation is beyond embarrassing Especially now. Unbearably close to me, I notice how awfully cute Pearl Eye's lips are. <laughs> I can feel his long white hair brush against my cheek, and it sounds like a like blueberry yogurt. 
Really? He's so close that I can feel the warmth of his breath on my skin. Oh, so I could be like, fuck this guy and go to beefcake or try to pivot to the boat to the side or remain face to face. I, I, I kind of like this guy that, uh, I believe his name Vincent, but the demo, the demo like showed his name real quick on the dialogue. I think that was a mistake, but I believe his name is Vincent. I'm going to remain face to face with this guy. All I can do is accept the embarrassing situation I'm in, I'm now in, but it doesn't make things any easier for me. Suddenly I hear the annoyed bark of a familiar voice. Stop moving around, settle down and sit still. Fortunately, we only need to go three stops like this. Why did I imagine that vulgarity earlier? Clearly, the breath of the universe has been called down upon me for it. I decided to try calming myself down by reciting the first 14 digits of pi. 35 digits in the... F what the fuck? The Fib Fibonacci sequence? Then calculating the power of 2 to 20. I don't know any of that. As the crowd pushes us out of the train, I purposely inhale the subway's vile stink. I need to get the oddly alluring sense of these two men out of my head. I'm a fighter, yes, and an adult. I took classes on the seduction of men. I'm not afraid of anything. Really, did I? Repeating the empowering words to myself, I pull myself together and stand confidently. An awkward silence hangs over our party now that the subway trip is over. If I didn't know any better, I'd say the tall one feels just as uncomfortable as I do, although Purple Eyes seems bored and deathly tired. It's pretty busy here, but we still have about a mile to go. Are you going to keep walking, or do I have to persuade you some more? I look around. The street is indeed busy. Even though I've had plenty of opportunities to escape up to this point, that still doesn't help me shake the feeling that I'm slow. I'm being slowly led into a trap. Oh, look at this little girl! She's so cute! I nod and we then head towards a rather nice looking building in the center of the business direction district. Judging by the surrounding signs on my phone's map, there are a lot of familiar companies here. Passing by a security guard, Purple Eyes uses a card of some sort to get us through a turn a turn style? This kidnapping is getting more and more ridiculous. Out of sheer curiosity, I continue forward, though. People around us seem to be ordinary office workers, hurrying home after a long day of work. Following behind the two men, I can't help but notice the surprise, the surprise stares of everyone around us. Apparently, the not-so-ordinary appearance of my kidnappers is puzzling them to them, too. Purple Eyes suddenly stops and begins to unlock the door at the end of the hallway. The door itself looks so unremarkable that I have mistaken it for a room closet. Confused, I loudly blurt out. Guys, please don't tell me this is also an elaborate scheme to make me an unbomb sales rep. You had to ruin the moment, didn't you? Corporal Eyes opens the door. While trying to keep my distance, I hesitantly peek inside. The sight that opens before me is much different from what I expected of a broom closet. I'll come to the to the asylum of per. Wait, what? You'll come? Or like, welcome, but it got cut off? To the asylum of perverts? What? <laughs> what did I- well, Wow, we're, we're way over time, by the way. The corridor looks vaguely familiar. We're gonna find out in the next episode why it looks so familiar. What the fuck? Asylum of perverts? <laughs> but anyway, thank you guys for watching today's episode. If you want to play the demo yourselves, the links are in the description box. If I do find a way, like, uh, to- that you guys can support them, I think the only way is to technically support them through Patreon. You guys can do so there. It's all in the description box and of the Ichio page, I believe. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. Stay beautiful, and I'll see you guys in the next one.